Okay. Call the uh, city council meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Oh. Randy did it. Yeah. Okay, Kim, uh, please call the roll. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Frank. Here. Councilor Morrissey is absent. Uh, Councilor Dillard. Here. Mayor Wright. Here. Councilor Montero. Present. Council President Pozalski. Here. Councilor Horning. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, we need to adjust our agenda. We're going to remove items 16 and 17. There will be no executive session tonight. I have a motion. I move to approve the amended agenda. I'll second. Council President Basalski and Councilor Montero. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I have two proclamations. Oh, I wanted to mention one other thing. Um, those of you who may try to uh, watch the work session, we had some technical difficulties, and the upload of that session will be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, one other thing, in case any of you are here for the school uh, appeal, that actually got changed, and it'll be next meeting on April 8th not tonight. So if you're here for that and you want to get up and leave, quite welcome, but I encourage you to stay. We have two proclamations tonight. First one, um, Eric from the Harbor is going to come up and introduce the uh, proclamation for Sexual Assault Awareness and Action Month. Welcome. plus advocate at the harbor in Astoria. Um, as we gather in this room, I'm reminded of the power that resides within our community to affect meaningful change, especially when it comes to the protection and well-being of our residents. April is a significant month for it marks the observant, observance of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, a time dedicated to shedding light on an issue that too often lurks in the shadows of silence and shame. It is a month where we stand in solidarity with survivors advocate for justice, and renew our commitment to preventing sexual violence in all its form. In the United States, an estimated one in three women and one in six men will experience some form of sexual violence in their lifetime. These numbers are not just statistics, they represent our neighbors, friends, and loved ones who have endured unspeakable trauma. Sexual assault shatters lives, erodes trust, and leaves deep scars that can linger for a lifetime. This crime knows no boundaries of age, gender, race, or socioeconomic status. It is a stark reminder of the work that still lies ahead of us. However, in the face of darkness, we must also recognize the resilience and courage of survivors who bravely share their stories, refusing to be defined by their trauma. They remind us of the strength of the human spirit and the importance of standing together as a community of support and understanding. As we gather here today, I urge each of us to take a stand against sexual violence. Let us educate ourselves and others, break the silence that allows these crimes to persist, and create a culture where survivors are met with empathy, support, and justice. Let us work together to strengthen resources for survivors, improve access to support services, and hold perpetrators accountable for their actions. Let this month serve as a rallying cry for change, a call to action that reverberates throughout our city and beyond. Together we can create a future where sexual assault is no longer a part of anyone's story. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Council President Pasolsky is gonna read the proclamation. Proclamation, whereas sexual assault affects Oregonians every day, whether as a victim or survivor, or as a family friend, member, partner, neighbor, employer, or coworker of a survivor. And whereas Oregonians of all gender identities experience sexual violence, including an estimated one in four adult women who has been the victim of rape, and nearly one in five men who has experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. And whereas one in 10 Clatsop County middle and high school students report inappropriate sexual contact by an adult before they turn 18. And whereas certain populations in Oregon experience much higher rates of sexual violence due to systemic oppression and inequity. 
And whereas out of a thousand sexual assaults, only 25 perpetrators will face any repercussions for the assault. And whereas sexual violence is preventable and all communities are strengthened by the encouraging, healthy, nonviolent interactions, relationships, and social norms. And whereas every community in Oregon has a role to play to help eliminate sexual violence by working together to promote social change. Now, therefore, Steve Wright, mayor of the city of Seaside, does hereby proclaim the month of April 2024 as Sexual Assault Awareness Action Month in Clatsop County and calls upon all community members and local agencies to speak out against sexual violence, educate one another on sexual violence prevention, and support and believe survivors. In witness thereof, he has set his hand and caused the seal of the city of Seaside to be affixed this 25th day of March, I take the uh, opportunity every once in a while to read one of my own proclamations, particularly if it's one that is very important to me and tonight's is. I always uh, have been very impressed by the spirit of volunteerism here in this city, and uh, particularly after I joined one of the boards, committees, commissions, and then on the council, I really saw how much work went into everything. And it's not just, um, as I'll mention, it's not just the people working for the city. Um, so many people are involved in, in multiple uh, various ser service organizations or clubs that do things for this city. And uh, we really need to be thankful for them. So, whereas the vision of the city of Seaside is to have our families thrive, our businesses prosper, and generations of visitors create memories that last lifetimes, which expresses how we want to live and work together, and whereas many residents of this community contribute to the well-being of people in Seaside by giving generously of their time, resources, and energy, and whereas many volunteers assist the city of Seaside in performing a multitude of duties, creating and sustaining valuable services, and making government by the people a reality. Members of the City Council, the boards, commissions, and committees, task forces, and other volunteers, uh, particularly with our fire and police departments, are all community volunteers. And whereas Seaside volunteers faithfully show up to help time after time, year after year, often working with many of our service organizations to take care of neighbors and community whenever there's a need. And whereas the City of Seaside values every one of our many Seaside volunteers and wishes to extend our deepest appreciation to all. Now therefore, I, Steve Wright, Mayor of the City of Seaside, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2024 as Volunteer Recognition Month. And ask all the people of Seaside to express their thanks and join in with the many volunteers who continue to help and serve in our community. And I signed it. So, again, thank you all very much. Um, people here, people out in Zoom land, anybody that happens to watch this. Moving on, um, now's the uh, time for public comments. Members of the public may use this time to provide comments to the City Council on items that are not scheduled on this agenda for a public hearing or public comment. Speaking time is limited to three minutes. Do we have anybody that is signed up? Didn't sign up. Oh, well. <laughs> you may come up and address the Council. Normally, over on the table there, there's a spot to get a little form uh, yeah, <laughs> tilt that down. I'm sorry. Uh, please state your name and uh, city of residence and what you are wanting to talk about. I am Jackie Sturman. I live in Seaside. I have missed a few meetings, so I don't know if you have made a definite decision on the property uh, that was given back to the city by the people that bought the old high school area.
the ball field down there and that on the north for end. what we're calling the north 40 north 40 the okay. park so i would like to suggest that the most northern grassy area there maybe a small area be semi-small area be fenced off for a dog park as the current dog park in the city is very inadequate um spencer you want to tell us uh, about the parks yeah so the uh, the city council has asked our parks committee to um, gather input and community feedback on what type of park should be and i believe there is a survey out there right now uh, that you can find i think it's on the city's website mm -hmm. a link to it which asks what type of park you'd like to see and what amenities you'd like to see. And I think dog, dog park is one of those options. So I'd encourage you and anyone else to go on and make sure your preferences are recognized. Right now, we're just trying to decide what type of a park. And then once we get that, we'll come back with more specific designs and specific amenities based on the feedback we get. So I encourage you to, to do that. And I think the Parks Committee has one more meeting where they're going to take in-person public comment on ideas. And off the top of my head, I don't know the date of that meeting. But if you come talk to me, I'll, I'll find that for you. I have that information here. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Thursday, April 4th, here in the city, in, the, in this room. Okay. What time? At uh, 6 p.m. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. Anybody else? Moving on. Uh, declarations of potential conflict of interest. Mayor, I will not be uh, participating in the decisions relating to 13B or 13C. Anybody else? Thank you. We have the uh, consent agenda, payment of the bills, approval of minutes. I have a motion. I, have a mo I move that we accept the consent agenda. Second. It's Councillor Frank and Councillor Dillard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> no items for reports or presentations tonight. Uh, no mention of boards, committees, and commissions. No unfinished business. New business, moving right along. Um, happy to uh, introduce Rick Prue. Come on up. Uh, you can either stand there or sit, you know, whichever you like. Wherever you uh, move the mic up sure. to get you. There we go. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you, City Council members and uh, management and, and staff of the city. My name is Rick Prue. I'm with the accounting firm Kern and Thompson in Portland, and I live in Newburgh, Oregon. Um, and we've completed our audit of the city's financial statements for the last fiscal year, 22-23, and uh, we submitted that to the to the state as well as to the the city. Um, I'm happy to report that we rendered what's called a, an unmodified opinion, a, a clean audit report. Uh, the city's finances are in good condition, and I've uh, met with the city uh, council members earlier and gone in detail of that report, and I want to thank you for choosing us as your auditors to continue. Any comments from the council? Um, as I mentioned before, the work session uh, will be online tomorrow, so you can uh, really want to watch that. And uh, after um, we finish this session here, uh, sometime soon, the audit will be available on our website. I'm, I move that we accept the City of Seaside audit report from Kernan Thompson. Second. And the urban renewal components. Here. I move that the City of Seaside accept the audit report for the City of Seaside and its urban renewal components and that they be filed with the City Recorder. I'll second. It's Council President Pasolsky and Councilor Montero. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Rick. Thank you all very much and look forward Thank to you. working for you in the next year. Okay.
Next on our agenda is the Intergovernmental Agreement for the Relocation of the Community Gardens. Would you step down and sit in the front row? You bet. Spencer. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So this is something, uh, an item that we've been working on for some time now. The um, this it feels like there is a bit of a, a domino effect going here. Of many different things that that preceded this, mm -hmm. going back to the school district needing to build a standalone softball facility. That location being identified um, at uh, Broadway Park, uh, necessitating 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 ne yes. necessitating the moving of the indoor batting facility which necessitates the moving or relocation of the community gardens uh, located at that site. So after um, a good year of discussions on this, on this item, um, uh, we've come to the recommendation of relocating the gardens to the uh, existing railroad gardens um, located on uh, South Roosevelt. Um, the School district is has a commitment as a, a part of the agreement for the school district to use city property. There was the condition that they be responsible for moving those gardens, and um, they are um, they have uh, worked out. They we are entering into this agreement with them in order to um, move those gardens. So um, let's see. The, uh, so what they are proposing to do is to fund um, seventy five thousand two hundred dollars towards the um, expansion, relocation, and or maintenance of the gardens. By entering into this agreement, um, then the city and Sunset Empire Park and Recreation District will be responsible for um, for any of the relocations, and the Seaside School District is is, is done. This agreement also has a Sunset Empire being a uh, signer of this agreement as there is an agreement that any of the funds being expended would be done. Um, both organizations would need to sign off on, on their use. Um, anyways, uh, so the, the initial plan is to expand and refurbish the existing gardens to make them more attractive and more usable to users. And then if the demand is there to expand, we will use the funds to expand the existing gardens. And that's the report I have. And okay. I don't see anyone here from the school district or Sunset Empire, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, there was, but he left. <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw him. Huh. I left. So this is for clarification, I think. Um, if I didn't know what I know if I was brand new and I read this I think I would have a question as to why is the city involved nowhere in this agreement does it seem to indicate that the land that the garden was originally on is city property and under 3.1 under the garden relocation um, if I'm just reading, city will work in good faith with SEPRD to facilitate the relocation. Nowhere in there does that specify onto city land. And I think that's why the city is party to this agreement, is because we're looking at um, uh, land that is city land. We know that um, item B, improving the railroad gardens, we already know that city land, but it doesn't specify that the reason we're working with SEPRD on this is to move the Sunny Hunt or to move the gardens onto city-owned land. Sure, I would, I would, I would comment that, that that is true. Um, I would add that, again, with this domino effect, the current Sunny Hunt gardens is on city property which necessitated the condition placed on the school district on, on the use of the property to be the relocation. So I believe this ties it back to that condition and that 
condition was predicated upon it being on city property. However, if we were looking or if in the future we consider another piece of property that the city doesn't own, we would still want to enter into this agreement um, so that the school district has uh, confidence that they fulfilled the requirements of that condition. Okay. I'm so go ahead, Randy. Go ahead. Um you know, the way I read this was that, yeah, we were going to improve the railroad gardens and plant a buffer zone of, of an accepted bush there. But uh, the way I, I see this is the, the a search would still go on to relocate the Sunny Hunt Gardens. And not specifying that it would have to be on city property. Well, it looks to me like both things are happening. So, and I, so that, that, that might be something to clarify. So I think we specifically wanted the agreement um, to have as much flexibility as possible. So basically this agreement really just takes care of the school district uh, paying this amount and then being out of the picture. And then it's between uh, the city of Seaside and Sunset Empire on, on what to do with the gardens. Separate from that, yes, we have identified the railroad gardens as our preferred site. However, if for some reason we determine after improving it that that's not a good location, there's not enough interest, and we want to move it somewhere else, this agreement allows us to use those funds at other locations. So if we, if we identify another location in the future, we can um, use those funds to create a new site at a different location. However... Because those funds are being held by uh, the Sunset Park and Recreation District Foundation, once they're in that bank account, I don't see that the city has any say over how that money gets used except for the agreement at Railroad Park. That no, this, is in this here. agreement allows it, says that, that we jointly need to approve of any expenditure of those funds. Okay. 2.1.3 specifically yeah. says we have to mutually agree. Yes, I saw school, that. Not I the saw school, it. just park and city. I see that. Right. Um, I just, I'm just a little uncomfortable that there's no mention in here of city land, that it's going from city land to city land. Um, and, and, that's and I think where it's because we're not we're trying not to be specific on the property um, because it may not be city land. It may be city land and another property um, there. Um, we have an idea of what we want to do and we have a direction moving forward, but we don't want this agreement and the funds being tied too specifically to a piece of property that it takes away our ability to consider other options in the future. So I think it's specifically, uh, I don't wanna say vague, but specifically wide open for the use. And we tried to put as much flexibility into the use that it could be relocation, it could be maintenance, it could be improvement or enlargement or any of those kinds of things. Uh, but if you want to, um, you know, add to your motion or something like that, that the purpose, the reason the city is interested is because it's currently on, um, on the current gardens are on city, city property. Uh, that's totally acceptable. I think from the school district's perspective who drafted the agreements, what they're interested in is uh, entering into this to fulfill the purposes of the condition. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see with them dra drafting the agreement, it, it's really their the fulfillment of their obligation. And um, I don't know how I would work that in there. So I just... Anybody else? I like the idea that it's it's kind of wide open. Um, the main part that uh, made sure that got in there was that any monies 
uh, dispersed had to be agreed to by both yes. SEPRD and the city. And I think that'll pretty well take care of any of the other issues. Um, you know, it, it's possible that it wouldn't end up on uh, any additional land um, would be used, wouldn't be city land. I'd be very happy if somebody gave us some land for a garden. But that's uh, that will be a whole new agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anybody in the audience that wants to weigh in on this? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, can I get a motion of some kind? I move to authorize <clears throat> the city manager to sign the intergovernmental agreement for the relocation of the community gardens as attached or as amended if the city manager approves of any amendments. Second. That's, um, Councillor Horning and Councillor Dillard, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Maybe I'll clarify that last bit of the, the motion that was recommended. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is just because it does need to be signed by two other organizations, if there are minor things that don't yes. affect the agreement um, that come up, that I still have the authority to to sign it and not bring it back to council. Clearly, if there's anything uh, substantial, a change requested, um, that would uh, be brought back to the city council for reconsideration. So what you're telling us is that this has not yet been signed by either the school board or the SEPRD board? I'm not aware that either of them has signed it. I know, um, I don't know about school district. I know the parks district only meets once a month. And so this would be on for their next meeting. And I think um, it was, um, uh, we just got this draft about the time the packets went out last week. So uh, highly unlikely they've met yet, but I think we're the first ones. Yeah. I don't typically like for the city to be the first to sign something <laughs> like this. I don't expect any changes as all three organizations, the staff have kind of signed off on it on our ends. Okay, next item on the agenda. Get to it here. We have um, the Seaside Community Food Forest donation request for the community garden allocated budget funds. Spencer, would you like to introduce this one? Sure. Um, and actually, Zach, do you want to come in and introduce it since you put the staff report together? So um, uh, just for a little bit of background, every year um, the city budget committee um, receives requests for um, contributions from local nonprofits, and we go through a process to evaluate those. And uh, sometimes um, we do request that they um, we make an approval, but contingent upon coming back with more information. So that was the case for the Seaside Food Forest. They requested fifteen thousand dollars. The um, budget committee uh, approved three thousand dollars, and that was that recommendation was approved by the city council. So they have made their um, request to come back and maybe I've said too much, Zach. Anything left for you to say? <laughs> All right. So uh, with that, this is really a uh, discussion between the applicant uh, representing Food Forest, David Pasalski, and the council. Mr. Pasalski. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, thanks for having me tonight. Uh, we came before the budget committee last year, as was stated, and had requested $15,000 with the idea. Um, at the time, we were anticipating having the American Legion location uh, for the community garden and part of the funds that we were trying to uh, use was for one of the things we had put in there was a tool library and the budget committee did not wasn't too excited about the, that use of the funds. Um, we've waited and haven't done anything as far as the funds that were allocated uh, for the last budget year because we didn't have a garden to put 
those types of funds into or the efforts to put those into. Um, upon the new, you know, passing of the new uh, agreement and the new location for the garden, um, there are ad there's additional work that our organization would like to do to help act, uh, accentuate what's being done down at the railroad gardens. Um, it's our goal uh, to help assist that relocation effort to build interest and use of those garden locations to help improve the livability in our community. And so I wanted to come back and ask for the original 15,000 again, if there's a place to be able to find it in the budget. Um, I have sent a revised list of things that we would use those funds for, um, which includes besides um, I think in the re renovation and improvement of the existing gardens, the uh, district funds would be replacing the boxes that are there, putting in ADA boxes, um, improving the, the fencing that's there, and putting it basically back to usable condition. Um, additional space has been allocated there from the city that would require additional work to be done. And we've talked about our organization along with the master, gar master gardeners. Um, the master gardeners want to have a much bigger uh, impact in South County, which we haven't had before. And so they want to have some uh, learning garden beds. We've talked about having a native, uh, native shrub barrier to help reduce the amount of road debris that comes up into the garden area um, and to make it more beautiful. Our organization wants to also plant uh, shrubs up to the ODOT line so that, which would reduce the amount of maintenance that would be required of the city because the master gardeners and our organization along with Sunset Empire would be basically managing that whole park area. On the east side, we wanna be able to plant renewal, uh, perennial like berry plants and have blackberries, raspberries, blueberries growing along one side of it that anybody who comes along can enjoy. We also want to get our local service organizations involved in the garden uh, by providing them with a planting bed to be able to plant uh, pollinator type plants that attract bees and butterflies and hummingbirds um, so that our community is involved in it and it's not just a uh, space for garden rental space. It becomes a much more of a gathering place. Um, we want to bring in those native plants. I think it's important for people to know the benefit of having native plants planted, whether it's in their yard or elsewhere, because it helps the wildlife that's here. They grow better and they're easier to maintain. Um, we also, the Oregon State Extension through the Master Gardeners has a program called Seed to Supper that takes uh, lower income individuals, gives them a place and teaches them how to grow food and how to cook food uh, that they may not have the opportunity to. Our organization wants to be able to take those dollars and pay for those garden boxes for them for their first two years. So the first year they would be in the Seed to Supper program, second year we would fund that box for them and then they would hopefully be able to fund it ongoing from there. We also want to be able to use some of those boxes for what's called grower row, where everything that's grown in those boxes goes to the food bank. So funding, some of this funding is going to be used to essentially pay for the maintenance of those boxes, what would be the normal rental fee um, for those boxes that are used for community charity type work. And then beyond that, we kind of have this idea that there's going to be organizations, businesses, homeowners that want to be able to grow gardens in their, in, their, uh, in their yards. And we want to do fundraising and use these funds to pay to put garden beds in people's yards and help them with their food stability, um, resilience in the event of a disaster, and other uh, benefits of not just having grass or gravel, but have the ability to grow their own food. And so we kind of have a goal that we want to get to a point where we're putting in 100 garden beds a year. 
in Seaside. And so I ask for out of, out of the norm uh, <laughs> to uh, reconsider our original request. We didn't put in a request for the 2024-25 budget because we didn't have, we didn't know about the garden at the time that those requests would have gone in or those additional funds would have been requested through that. The timeline just didn't work out. Okay, counselors? I think the first thing I would want to address here is the <clears throat> coming back to the council and asking for us to reconsider the original amount that was approved. This um, sets up for a very uh, a precedent that I am not eager to set, and that is that when the budget committee has done their work and made a recommendation to the council, and the council has accepted that recommendation, and the and that is what is in the plans, that the organization, um, whether or not there are changing circumstances, and in this case we can say they're changing circumstances, that the organization comes back and asks us to reconsider their original request. That kind of precedent would open the door for every organization to do that who didn't, who isn't happy with the original request that was granted. And um, I am not in favor of doing that. I would have to uh, concur with Councillor Montero. And uh, it's not that this isn't a good um, ask or um, reason to be coming for it, but it's just, um, it's just how we're going about adjusting uh, a budget that was accepted already. I would much rather have seen um, this, uh, another request come for the current budget year. And, um, you know, with as much seed money as there is right now coming from the school district, um, and how late it is, it's, it's, uh, already, you know, into the spring. Let's, uh, I'd, I'd like to see what happens with the existing, uh, plan and consider maybe a larger ask for next, next budget year. As much as I appreciate the work by the Food Forest and my relationship with Councilors Morrissey and Pasalski, I agree with Councilor Montero. I don't like the precedent. I, I think it ca would cause more problems. I tend to follow the same line of reasoning. The uh, idea is a little scary about uh, that despite all the good things that it looks like you have planned here um, it's too bad the timing worked out this way uh, because like you said uh, you could have come if the timing had worked out better um, some of the the things you have on here um, sure seems like could be done by the money from the school working through Sunset Empire and the city to come up with, um, as well as, uh, which we haven't really talked about yet, we still need to discuss the um, amount approved by the uh, budget committee last year. And uh, there sure looks like there's plenty of good things here on the list of things to do. Uh, the one I notice in particular that is $3,000 um, for doing the uh, additional buffer along the highway. Um, again, though, that could possibly be something that will be part of the 75 grand for the funds for the operation. Um, counselors, you have comments on uh, approving the 3,000 that the budget committee asked us to uh, further discuss. Before I go to that, I, I'm a little confused as to the um, relationships. Um, in the staff report, it said something about 
um, that the food forest has uh, gained a home at the railroad park. And what does that mean, um, given that that's city property? And um, also um, a nonprofit such as the food forest doing work on city property. I'm, I'm, to me, this is not in connection really with the IGA that we just did because this is a nonprofit. Um, the IGA, as Spencer said earlier, was just to make sure that the school district um, was sp sending their money the way they were supposed to send it and um, being uh, knowing that everybody would know that they're off the hook at this point. So I'm, I'm trying to, to wrap my head around what are the relationships? Is the food forest going to be um, uh, working alongside or under the the uh, supervision, I guess I'm going to call it, of SEPRD, which seems to be the group that is responsible for the gardens? So help me I, understand. I, I can't that. speak to the staff report. I didn't. I wasn't involved in writing that. Okay. Um, there is no agreement between Seaside Community Food Forest and any of those entities. Uh, all we have done is tried to help facilitate this move happening. Uh, okay. It was our efforts that tried to get the American Legion together that developed a budget for that work uh, that resulted in the 75000 being the number that was given uh, for, for the gardens. So uh, are you still going to have to work with SEPRD in uh, the design and whatever, absolutely. the approval of the plants, et cetera? Ab absolutely. In fact, uh, their maintenance director sits on our, bo on our board of directors. And so we're working, and we have a member of the uh, Master Gardeners on the board as well. So we are simply a fundraising organization trying to help facilitate the mission of what gardening can do in our community. And so our, you know, my purpose coming is for us to be able to gain some funds to be able to help expand what that garden is able to do for the community as well as expand gardening in the community beyond that. So it sounds like the start off point is going to be with railroad garden and Absolutely. We've held gardens, up we've held off on all, everything on else to try and line. get that garden moved. Right, which is a, another reason why funding further down the line because some of these projects are long-term projects uh well we are at the beginning of the growing season uh getting the boxes in the master gardeners have uh, probably close to a dozen people that want to help build those boxes we can get those built in a day and we, they can be planted for this year um, our thought was that they will go out, be marketed to the residents as, you know, garden space that they can rent for the year. Whatever doesn't get filled, we're hoping to be able to fill it with either grow a row or seed to set up a seed to supper program um, so that we can help facilitate the fact that that space is usable, that space is worth expanding uh, so as a replacement for Sunny Hunt. SEPRD is basically managing the gardens, and you come in as maybe like a sub-manager for we're, certain projects. I, I, I think we're more of a, um, as a champion for okay. helping make the okay. gardens uh, successful, because I don't think that the gardens are SEPRD's primary, no, they're not. Uh, primary yeah. mission. And so by bringing the master gardeners and our organization in there, we can really focus on making sure that that program is successful. Okay. Can I <clears throat> yeah. give the city's perspective on that? I'd like to rebut everything that this applicant, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, staff is, uh, is, I think what what uh, what David here uh, said is, is consistent and maybe add my, my view. Um, so, the, the gardens has always been on city property and it's been managed by Sunset Empire. Um, and that's the reason why in the agreement we have the funds being deposited in their accounts is because mm -hmm. they're the ones going to be doing the work and doing the management. 
um, in our consideration of the railroad gardens, Sunset Empire um, staff, Levi, put together a proposal for how it could be used and a proposed budget. Now, this is where the worlds, uh, you know, collide a little bit and we're all overlapping. We have, we're wearing multiple hats as he's both on the board and, and working for, on the board of Food Forest and, mm -hmm. and working for Sunset Empire. But with that said, the proposal from Sunset Empire included a lot of volunteer work from the food forest. So I look at it more as um, a method to get things constructed, maintained, built, whatever we want to say, and not just relying on paying to do it, but uh, getting community um, participation in it, which I think will help it be more successful than if we just, than if Sunset Empire just goes out and, and builds it. And so I think that's where the food forest has proposed to be kind of partner with them on that. There's no formal agreements yet. That doesn't mean that there couldn't be sometime in the future. Um, Realistically, that would probably be between them and Sunset Empire, but maybe it could be us. That's something that would be worked out in the future. I think right now it's more of a, I see it as a stepping up to help facilitate um, and and get these things going. Okay. Oh. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, I agree. I think the relationship that we've developed with the Master Gardeners will not only bring an education aspect to the gardens, that hasn't been there in the past. It's simply been rental space. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, the current class of people training to be master gardeners is close to 40 people and everybody wow. needs volunteer hours. Right. And so it's an opportunity for them to be able to get their volunteer hours by improving the city property uh, for the benefit of the community. I'm curious, has there been any interest from the Southwest Gardener Club? Uh, they have said uh, in the past when we were talking about the garden that they would be willing to give a, a, a donation. Mm. So that is something that we will pursue as we move through this. They don't have much time. They're no, busy they're, at they're Butterfield Gardens. Care of the <laughs> <laughs> Guys? Randy? Um, I'm. You know, I'm all for the, the 3,000 that was approved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make the motion that's in the staff report? Sure, I'd have to approve the funding request to Seaside Food Force in the amount of 3,000 for fiscal year 23-24 contingent upon the city entering into an intergovernmental agreement with the Seaside School District and SEPRD. Is there a second? Second. It's Councillor Frank and Councillor Dillard. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pasalski. We have one um, kind of bookkeeping thing to do that uh, we uh, need to uh, adjust an ordinance in a very minor way to follow what we've been doing. Spencer, you want to talk about this? Sure. It's recently come to our attention that our charter, which is our guiding document uh, for the city, um, requires us to specify the uh, date and time or location the date and time date and time of our city council meetings <clears throat> as far back as we can reckon we can see we've only ever specified the date which is the second and fourth mondays of every month and so well, with that brought to our attention we're proposing the attached ordinance that just specifies that the regular meeting will be at 6 p.m on the second and fourth mondays with that being said, and in recognition of that we almost always have a work session, I didn't want to leave that off and give the impression that we're that's a meeting to be hidden or something like that, recognizing it, but also 
adding some language in there that we're only going to hold it as necessary. So we're not bound to have that when we don't need to. So the extra language is the city council may also hold a work session prior to the regular meeting when needed. And by passing this, it'll mean that if somebody wants to change that meeting time from 6 p.m. to another time, that we'll have to go through an ordinance change, right? Um, I would read it as this is the standard. Now, the council always has the ability to dictate a time depending on special circumstances. So if for some reason um, there's another event going on and you want to hold a meeting at 7 o'clock, oh. I think you have that ability at a prior meeting to make that adjustment. If we want to change it permanently, That's what I was yes, referring then I think to. it's the right thing to do is to come back. Now, right. you could, let's say you wanted to change it permanently to a different time, you could say the next three meetings, we will hold it at a temporary new time of this, anticipating an ordinance to do it more permanently. But I think we have right. some options there. Okay. Okay, at this time, I'll open a public hearing because this is an ordinance. You want to jump up and say anything about us meeting at 6 o'clock? Here's your chance. Seeing none, I'll close uh, the public hearing. Counselors, any comment? Since we've been doing this already <laughs> for a year and three months. I have a motion to read Ordinance 2024-05 by uh, title, first reading by title only. I move for a first reading of Ordinance 2024-05 by title only. Second. Councillor Montero and Councillor Dillard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Spencer. Ordinance number 2024-05, an ordinance of the City of Seaside, Oregon, amending Chapter 30, City Council section 30-01 city council meetings of the code of ordinances seaside being that this is a uh, very small change and it's something we've already been doing i move that we have a second reading by title only of ordinance 2024-05 i'll second council president pasalski and councillor montero all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed Motion carries. Spencer. Ordinance number 2024-05, an ordinance of the City of Seaside, Oregon, amending Chapter 30, City Council, Section 30.01, Council Meetings of the Code of Ordinances, Seaside. Thank you. That'll be on our next agenda for third and final reading, assuming that it passes, yes. Okay, great. Moving into comments from city staff. Most of them left or never <laughs> showed up. <laughs> we do have our police lieutenant here. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. I've had a little increase in uh, calls for service. There's definitely more traffic. Um, construction's almost done. So we'll hopefully be moving in at the end of this week if everything works out well. A uh, new patrol t Tahoe from this budget year just arrived, so I'll be working on getting that outfitted. So you'll see a new uh, white Chevy Tahoe. And then on the volunteers, thanking our reserves, we have three reserves. Uh, Officer Balcom has been with us for a year. We've been very fortunate. We have two reserves, Officer Russ and Officer Crosshire, have been with us for seven years. Wow. And then we have a citizen volunteer, Ken Butterfield, who's been with us for 15 years. Yep. So thank you to them. They do a lot for us, and we're grateful to have them. Uh, we got... Uh, volunteer Butterfield from the Citizens Academy and that actually is starting up on April 22nd. We have a link to apply online on our uh, Facebook page. So it's a great event. It goes from April 22nd to like June 17th. Uh, it's taught by local officers. So if you're able to join or citizens are able to join, they'll get a lot out of it. But thank you. Councillor Montero's been to that. I've been to that. Um, I don't know about the other councillors. It's a great thing. You get to see all of the agencies in the county and uh, see what they do and how they interact. Definitely. It's an amazing thing. I highly recommend it. Zach, anything else? Again, um, good job on getting the audit and all that done. We appreciate it. <laughs> so that the uh, interwebs can hear this. Um, 
Yeah, I my staff put in a ton of hours in completing that audit, and they deserve a ton of credit in this too. So, I just wanted to you know throw out a big public thank you and and good job to them. Um, they they put in a lot of effort behind behind the scenes. So okay, thank you. Thanks to them. Okay, over here. Thank you, Jordan, for filling in with John. Kim? Spencer? Um, one update I have is starting tomorrow evening, City of Seaside and our convention center is hosting the Northwest uh, City, Man City and County Managers Conference. So these are county and city managers from mostly from Oregon and Washington, but also some from Alaska, in theory. Um, so we'll be here uh, invading the convention center and our local hotels and restaurants. And so we're excited to host. And I think one of the, the highlights, hopefully, <laughs> on uh, Thursday, no, Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, we have, uh, there's three different excursions available. That I'm on the planning committee since I'm the local host. So we have three excursions. One of them is going to be a early morning excursion to Cannon Beach for the tide tide pools and to do a, a tour of that um, and then um, Wednesday afternoon they have uh, the participants have a choice of either a tour of Fort Clatsop or they can go on a short walking tour of the prom from the convention center to after the prom the turnaround that will be hosted by our mayor uh, we'll head to the Times Theater where we're going to do a presentation on kind of the local tourism industry here and how the convention center city uh visitors bureau sdda and the chamber all kind of work together uh to promote tourism in in the in the area um and i think it it's so it is uh as i've looked at the attendance people signing up it is twice as popular as going to fort clatsop i'm going to assume it is uh because of the content and not because they can get a beverage while they're there. It ends up at but, the pub, um, yes. <laughs> I, will, I will stick with that, but we're excited to host everyone and looking forward to that, including, I believe, um, Thursday afternoon, the annual volleyball tournament between Oregon and Washington. Um, and along with that, there have traditionally <laughs> been um, beach volleyball nets set up on the beach. And I can't remember if it's by beach or first or ocean way and first one of those two right onto the beach have traditionally been four nets but it looks like they've been taken down since about the pandemic and so we're going to get those um up and installed just in the nick of time so but then they'll be there for the for everyone else to continue to enjoy and we're working closely with the chamber on that so appreciate them and appreciate public works for helping to get those in do you need an mou for alaska to join one of the teams <laughs> when we do the harpooning event, they'll be like, <laughs> oh, better watch that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Randy, your last time on Zoom, right? You're coming home? That's true. And All right. just so you know, I've, I've arranged for some good weather uh, before I get there. So, beginning. Friday, your rain is going to stop and it's going to roll through Tuesday. Okay, so you're going to well, see some you. sun, and that'll that'll make the convention much nicer. Also, <laughs> um, a quick announcement though: tomorrow, in these very chambers where you sit, the airport committee meeting will happen at six fifteen. So uh, we invite everyone to attend, and uh, that's about all I have for now. Thank you. Safe travels. Steve. Yeah, pass. Don? Well, this is uh, basically repeating what the city manager said uh, with regard to the North 40 Park Plan. The Parks Advisory Committee will be having a meeting on Thursday, April 4th at 6 p.m. in this room. And you'd, the public is invited to come and review the proposed plans and to speak briefly to the city or the Parks Advisory Committee to generate ideas. Uh, as uh, was described earlier, there's three major kinds of parks, and then there are many different kinds of activities that can be allocated to each kind of park design. 
this is an opportunity for you to come in and provide feedback that'll help us design a park that's most responsive to the public. And uh, then on May 5th, uh, that would be the last day to submit your, your surveys. Uh, they can be found posted locally and online, and I think probably here in the City Hall. I'm not sure about that. Okay, yes it is. So right. if you want to sign up, please do. We'd like to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Tita. Uh-huh. Hold on. Okay, so um, I think I told you um, at our last meeting that I had met with FEMA and given them information, getting them started thinking about, are starting to think about um, a vertical evacuation structure. Um, on, was it Friday, Spencer? Thursday or Friday? Spencer and I met with Espen Swanson, who is the uh, local ledge aide for Suzanne Bonamici, and also talked about that. So pushing the idea, because it takes a long time to, to get money and to get people to uh, say that they will support you to get the money. Um, what we know is that we still have to get that feasibility study and, and that kind of thing. But um, he also seemed to indicate that um, this is the kind of project that, uh, that FEMA is very eager to, to um, support. And this Thursday at 10 o'clock at Bagels by the Sea, I will be having coffee with the counselor. Thank you. Council President David. Uh, I don't have anything tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Just a few updates. Um, counselors, you are invited to um, Senator Merkley's town hall that will be on April 6th. Time is probably 2 p.m. for a local leaders session and 2.30 for the town hall, but that is still up in the air. And I'll let you know as soon as we can. Um, David and Spencer and I met with the new um, legislative rep for uh, Merkley, a uh, guy named Gustavo, and we talked about some of the same things you did with Bonamici's rep, uh, particularly looking for federal funding and figuring out how to um, build evacuation centers. Uh, Housing-wise, still some things going on. The county um, housing task force meets this Wednesday at exactly the same time as the walking tour through Seaside is. So hopefully uh, somebody from the uh, city will go to that. We are um, also looking, uh, trying to investigate this old relationship Seaside has with a sister city in Japan. I made some contacts at an event uh, on Thursday. We'll see how that goes. Uh, keeping in mind that this is our 125th year of existence, I'd like to announce that a local pub has created the Seaside Sunset Sasquasqui Centennial Pale Ale. Wow. If you want to know where that's at, you can also call it the Seaside 125. Um, and also, it uh, just happens to be at that same location, History and Hops, is Thursday night. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, we're in the midst of If I Were the Mayor contest. Um, Seaside and Cannon Beach are doing it together. And Earhart actually got enough entries. He's doing it on his own. So we'll be announcing the winners to that very soon. Uh, again, uh, finishing up, as I usually do with a quote, um, volunteerism is a big deal. Um, we saw that uh, uh, Tita and Spencer attended the fire and rescue banquet, their, their annual banquet. They're not just volunteers right. there, but we have paid staff as well. But we all, they also have a huge support system, and it's very important that uh, that's there for them. And... They made a very big point about how Seaside's family is really a family. And so, uh, you know, volunteers always have supports 
support people behind them, and I would just like to take the opportunity to say I'm thankful for my support system. Uh, her name is Patty, and we're coming up on 47 years of marriage that she's put up with me. Um, and then, uh, so, you know, that uh, was a great uh, description of most volunteers. They're not doing it for any glory or fame. They're doing it because they really love where they live. And I'm thankful that I, I've been here 10 years now, and it's, I can't imagine living anywhere else. So my quote tonight is from Charles Dickens. You might have heard of him. He wrote, do all the good you can and make as little fuss about it as possible. Meeting is adjourned.